Suffice it to say, the far left is not too happy that the right wing is winning in Europe. And riots have emerged in France, not just over this, but basically over this. But uh, you know, they riot in France. It's what they do. So when people are like, oh, no, more protests in France, I'm kind of like, yeah, whatever. But this is a big story because in France, Macron has dissolved parliament, which I'm sure many of you, uh, many of you have heard of. And we'll be holding snap elections. It is expected Marine Le Pen's populist party will win. Here's what I find fascinating. What I find fascinating is how the New York Times frames this. So let me break it down for you. A legitimate election is held for the European Parliament. Marine Le Pen's party wins swimmingly. So Macron, the president of France, says we're going to hold snap elections in France. It's very risky. But I don't know if it makes sense to call it risky. I think he's just basically giving up French parliament to right wing populist nationalist forces. This is, I suppose, some people have said this, how it's done. When the president realizes that the will of the people is not being represented, he says, OK, we'll hold elections and we'll have the people represented. This is being called by The New York Times wreaking havoc. I kid you not. In Germany and in France, because of legitimate elections where the right has won, the New York Times says they are wreaking havoc. In the meantime, we have far left extremists smashing things, fighting cops. They're throwing rocks at Nigel Farage, getting arrested. That's another viral video. The riots in France, perhaps it's not havoc because that is what is expected of the French. But come on. It's absolutely insane. For the New York Times to frame this as the far right winning and wreaking havoc when they're the plurality. They, they're, they're the largest now voting bloc. That means that's the will of the people. So you don't call that far right. That's moderate. What does it mean to be far right, far left? Well, the relative terms. I would say if the majority of a people in a country hold the same views, that's the center. And then you have the bell curve. So if Marine Le Pen, as a nationalist, populist French politician, represents the largest voting bloc, that's the middle. It's the middle. And then you have fringe elements. And perhaps you can say, to, and this is fair, it really does depend on the size of the plurality. It's probably fair to say Marine Le Pen is conservative leaning relative to the rest of France. You can't rightly call them far right when they represent more than any other political faction. It is fair to say they're right wing if you've got various left wing forces that make up the left but disagree to varying degrees. But this is the world we live in, where you can go around smashing things, destroying monuments, and they say, I don't know, it's fine. It's a a peaceful protest. But heavens, if you win an election, you are wreaking havoc. You take a look at what's going over, uh, going on here in the United States. You got some kids riding scooters on pride on, on a pride mural on the street. Felony charges because apparently the kids were skidding on the on, on the street. Yep. One 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 of the one, it was two kids and one adult, but they're all basically teenagers. And that they will arrest you for blasphemy laws at the same time. We see a war memorial desecrated. Nothing. Nothing. This is where we are. It's true, in, it's true in France and Europe, but I will say this. The New York Times shows you what the corporate press thinks of you. You are an other. But make no mistake, this proves the New York Times is a fringe element. And I'd like to stress this because I want you to share this, this idea with your friends and your family. You can ask them if the majority of people in the United States believe that say Donald Trump is bad, would you consider them to be the center or far left? And they're going to say the center. They're not far left because they don't like Trump. Right. Far left. That would be if the perspective was Donald Trump is the center. Then anyone who opposed him would be left or far left. But they're not going to say that, right? They're going to say no, of course, because the majority of people think he's bad. Right. What about a plurality? Same idea. Plurality just means like the largest block. In France, they held an election. Marine Le Pen won. Most the, the, the largest block says they want her. Is that not then the center? 
or center right to a certain degree. And then you can tell them that Trump is the front runner for the election. So if most people want Trump to win, or I should say a plurality of voters have expressed they want Donald Trump to win 41 percent in aggregate, according to 538, which is which is, by the way, Democrat leaning. Does that not represent that the right is not far right? It's just the moderate right leaning towards the middle because that's where most people are. They don't want to admit it, but that's the reality. I think it's fair to say that when you have two large distinct blocks, you don't really have a far left and a far right. You just have a left and a right, but they're distinct. And I think that's what you have in the United States. As for Europe, I do think it's fair to say that with Marine Le Pen getting around 31 percent, you have a right and a left as well. But it's 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 mixed. How do you how do you, how does the media come out and attack them for wreaking havoc? Well, here's the story from The Guardian. Just a quick little snippet. Protests broke out in Paris on Sunday as Marine Le Pen's far right national rally party won a sweeping victory in the European Parliament elections, gaining 32 percent of the vote. As the result came in, the French president, Emmanuel Macron, announced he was dissolving the National Assembly and called for legislative elections to begin on 30th of June. I, I like how uh, they write in the UK. On 30 June, demonstrators chanted anti-fascist slogans in Paris's Pla uh, Place de la République. Fouad Kayat, 27, a protester, said, people like me, on top of which I'm a Muslim, We'll be the first victims of Emmanuel Macron's risky bet if tomorrow we find ourselves with a far right prime minister in our country. I didn't realize that France was a Muslim nation, but OK, I guess here's uh, some some uh, a clip from Clement Lano. Actually, uh, this guy's a good reporter. I've, I've met him. Uh, I, I was covering stuff in France. Ongoing tensions, projectiles and tear gas between anti extreme right demonstrators and police officers. Anti-extreme right. I love that. What do you, what do you, how, do you, what do you, how do you say that in, Fran in French? Projectiles et gaz lacrimogene. I can't pronounce this. Entrant manifestants anti-extreme droit et policiers. Manifestants. That's what they, uh, they call protest manifestations. It's really funny. They call protest manifestations. It's like a weird thing. Well, here's the video. We will play for you now. Typical protest stuff. Typical France. And for the most part, you know, this is why I wouldn't want to live in France. Like this kind of stuff happens all the time. Not for me, man. I'll take the countryside. But here's where we're currently at politically. Emmanuel Macron refused to accept the prime minister's resignation. Gabriel Attal tried to persuade French president against snap elections, offering himself as a sacrificial lamb after Euro elections defeat. Macron is ruling out resigning whatever the result of the elections may be. And I got to say, while many of you may be going, no, Tim, these protests mean something, they don't. I mean, they kind of do. But this is from Fodor's travel. Protesters threatened to poop in Seine River before Paris Olympics. Poop in the Seine River. It's S-E-I-N-E. -E. It sounds funny. It's like insane river. Yes. Parisians aren't happy. So they're going to poop in their own river. Okay, I guess. Now, the reason I bring that up is as people are charging through the street, smashing things, fighting with police, and threatening to defecate in their own waterway. Oh, boy. The New York Times reports. In EU elections, the center holds, but the far right still wreaks havoc. What? What do you mean wreaks havoc? They won a legitimate election. They're a large, they're the plurality voting bloc. They're the biggest party. Voters in the EU delivered strong gains to anti-immigrant nationalist parties, challenging leaders in Germany and France and unsettling the political establishment. Oh, heavens me. Casting ballots in 27 countries. Voters largely backed centrists in European Parliament elections, but far-right parties made serious inroads in France and Germany. Partial results made public late Sunday showed that centrist political groups were poised to lose some seats, but still maintain a clear majority of more than 400 seats in the 720-seat assembly. Even so, 
The outcome seemed likely to steal the far right as a disruptive force and unsettle the bloc's mainstream establishment. The balloting indicates that the prevailing winds have grown chill for some of Europe's political establishment and underscored that the momentum of the far right forces over the past decade had yet to crest. You know what's really funny about this? Why would they not just report the news? Why couldn't they just say uh, anti-immigration or nationalist political parties made tremendous gains as sentiment in Europe shifts towards populist nationalism? Concerns over immigration have resulted in boons for the parties led by Marine Le Pen and the AFD, the alternative for Germany. I like how it's funny. It's like AFD, but we call it alternative for Germany because we call it Germany despite the fact that it's Deutschland. I don't get it, but, you know, historians probably do. The New York Times shows their true colors, even though this is one of the largest, if not the largest bloc in France, they are wreaking havoc on who, on what, on some kind of global agenda. The far right is wreaking havoc only if you view them as a disruptive force to your worldview. For I would not say they're wreaking havoc. I'd say they're making gains. A rather neutral way to view it. Hey, how about we read an article that says in the European Union, Marine Le Pen saves the day, destabilizing those who would wreak havoc on Europe. That's one way to put it, right? That's the better way to put it, to be completely honest. These moderate, whatever you want to call them, I don't think it's fair to call them moderate, these crackpot, psychotic, culturally suicidal forces in Europe and the United States, are, they are destroying themselves. And then you have nationalist populist parties that are just like, we need to control for immigration. This un- unchecked immigration is destroying the fabric of the country. And they're wreaking havoc. If you look at it between chaos and order, I can tell you very, very easily that there is a side of chaos. And that's like Macron. That's the European Union. They are chaos. They allow boats to slam into the shores of Italy and Spain as dozens of illegal immigrants storm into Europe. And then what? Crime, death, murder. In Sweden, they have a grenade attack problem. It's not because of immigration. No, me, I I like immigrants. I think immigrants bring cultural enrichment. But guess what? Not every single one. And it has to be in a controlled matter. There's this game that they used to have on uh, Windows 95. You young folks, you may not know about it. It was called Life Genesis. And uh, it was funny. You had like little dots and they were red and blue dots and they interacted with each other. If uh, you took a big spattering of blue dots, they like pulse and they, they, there's like a rule to how they operate. And they just like appear and disappear based on what's next to each other. If you put too many of the red dots and the blue dots the red dots would convert the blue dots into red and there'd be no more. And the other way around is true. It's really simple. If you take too much of one element, you will destroy the other. What we want is to preserve what made Europe, what made the United States successful. How do you do that? With controlled migration. See, I think these immigrants, by all means, everybody come on over. Get in line, wait your turn, and we'll figure out where you can go that makes sense, that will allow you to flourish, and will not destroy the fabric of a wealthy nation that has clearly found success. That's not what they are doing. The forces of the European Union and the Biden administration here in the United States, the Democrats, their whole plan is flood the countries and burn them to the ground. That is chaos. That is wreaking havoc. The New York Times blames the far right who simply requests stability in the preservation of a system that made them successful. If you were to ask me, it's an attack from an enemy nation. I don't know. I, that's how I do it. Right. If I was an enemy nation in the United States, I'd be like, can we fund TikTok and OnlyFans and then just get all these uh, political, this political party flooding their own country with non-citizens who are going to gut them from the inside out? There you go. They say in France, the voting ushered in a political earthquake 
Soon after the results were announced, President Emmanuel Macron announced on national television that he would dissolve the country's National Assembly. We know this. The rise of nationalists and demagogues is a danger for our nation and for Europe. The outcome may put Marine Le Pen, Macron's main rival, in her strongest position yet to challenge the French mainstream in presidential elections three years from now. Mr. Macron must step aside, uh, must step aside then because of term limits. The far right alternative for Germany party or AFD officially labeled a suspected extremist group by German authorities also had a strong showing. Look how corrupt, corrupt Germany is. A political party that has people vote for them. And like, that's an extremist group. Uh, They're a major political party with lots of voters. Nope, extremists. Yeah, Germany is an awful place. (laughs) I gotta be honest. It's been an awful place for longer than 100 years. Projections gave the party about 16% of the vote. The result placed AFD behind the mainstream conservative Christian Democratic Union. This we read yesterday, so we know this. Right-wing parties now govern alone or as part of coalitions in seven of of the European Union's 27 countries. They have gained across the continent as voters have grown more concentrated on nationalism and identity, often tied to migration and some of the same culture war politics pertaining to gender and LGBTQ issues that have gained traction in the U.S. The strong far right showing was likely to reverberate even in the U.S., where it can be expected to hearten kindred political forces loyal to former President Donald Trump as he seeks a return to office. Oh, boy. Oh, me. Oh, my. That one's true. Take a look at this. 538. Who's ahead in the polls? Trump is in aggregate by one point. You add Kennedy to the mix and uh, Trump does a lot better in all these polls. So right now, what's fascinating is in aggregate, they show Trump at 41, Biden at 40 and Kennedy at 9.3. It's not fair. Not every poll they use in this has uh, uh, Kennedy in it. When you scroll down and you see we got morning consult, June 7th and 9th, Biden is up one. That's a big poll. YouGov has Trump up. Morning consult, Trump is up. YouGov, Trump is up. YouGov again, another poll. You've got Biden up. I, I wonder what's the point of putting out two polls that are just contradictory. Emerson College, June 4th or 5th, Trump is up six points when you include Kennedy. Kennedy, Stein, and West. Emerson College then has them tied with no Kennedy. YouGov, The Economist, has it even as well. And then ActiVote, two polls from ActiVote, have Trump up four. Morning Consult has Trump up one. And then the day of the conviction, Biden is up one. And from, uh, I'm sorry, this is the day after. The day of and after you have Survey Monkey, Trump is up four. I don't have to tell you. It's pretty mixed. I, it does seem to, it, like the guilty verdict has done absolutely nothing. But I tell you this. They say Trump is far right. They say I'm far right. If, if Trump is far right and Democrats are the opposition to that, then they're far left. There's no middle, right? There is no one who's like, I kind of like what Joe Biden's doing here and what Trump is doing here. That's not possible. No sane person could say that. And the reason is Biden's not offering up any real policies. Chips Act. That's what everyone says. That was a while ago. I like it. You know, I really do like Joe Biden uh, trying to get rid of junk, junk fees. You know, somebody makes minimum wage or whatever, and then their check, their check comes in late or they buy something and then they overdraft. And I, This is the most insane thing in this country. Someone who's waiting for a $200 paycheck, they've got $7.80 in their account. And so they're like, I'm going to buy some McDonald's. And they say, OK, and they go and buy it. And then they didn't realize they thought they had nine bucks. They had seven eighty. They needed to eat. They bought a Big Mac meal. The card went through. That's right. They swiped the card and said, you're good. And they were like, I thought I, I knew I had the money. The next day when they wake up, when they look in their account, expecting their 240 some odd dollars, they notice they have only 140. And they're like, whoa, I got to I got to pay my my insurance for my car. I got to I got to buy food. What happened? And they look overdraft fee, $70. How does that happen? Oh, it's because we let you buy something when you didn't have the money. Why? I just did not decline my card because they're ripping you off. Scumbags. I can respect Biden, the Democrats going after that. Now you got Donald Trump making a pledge. He's saying 
we're going to get rid of taxes on tipped wages. I completely agree. Now, he clarified. He said that what he's going to do is going to go call on Congress to bring that bill to his desk so he can sign it. If the Republicans win Congress, Trump can easily amend that. And it's the right move. It is. Tips are a gift. That's it. I pay my bill. And if I decide I'm going to give the server some extra money, that's a gift. You don't tax gifts up to a certain amount of money. And there's lifetime gift totals. So I will stress, if I decide I want to give a server a hundred bucks after the fact, that should not be taxed. Trump is right about that one. That's a good move, too. And a lot of apparently that that had a big polling swing where people like six percent of people said that would make them consider voting for Donald Trump. It's a good move. It's the right move. The logically consistent move. But I suppose I can put it this way. In the beginning, as I'm talking about what makes a center, it's the ideas of the majority of the people. From the perspective of Europe, the United States is far right, all of them, even the Democrats, because they're all nationalized health care. Even the right wing parties are for nationalized health care. They just it's part of it's They've had it for a long time since World War Two. So the pers- what makes something right or left really comes down to the perspective of the body politic. Most people in this country feel this way. That is the middle. And that because I tell you this. You've got in France. Marine Le Pen, nationalist populist. You've got other elements that are much further on views. And I don't, I don't know if right is the right word, but more extreme in their views as to how, how things should be handled. You've got a left, you've got a right, and then you've got Marine Le Pen, which probably falls somewhere center right. Nationalist populist, we want to control immigration, we want borders, we want to be French. Okay, I guess. That's far right. No, it isn't. It's because they're communists and they're lying. Anyway, Europe, good luck. And many of us hope that the U.S. will see something similar. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.